Hello. In this video, I will be showing you two examples of the same pathology. And what we're looking at here, first of all, is a sagittal section uh, of the brain. And we can see the corpus callosum here. Let me just uh, rotate this so that we can see here the outer surface of the brain. And there is the temporal lobe. In this region, around the region of the basal ganglia and thalamus, there is a mass, and um, it is a relatively ill-defined mass. It has a 10 appearance, and we can see that it's actually difficult to actually demarcate where the mass stops and the rest of the brain parenchyma starts. So it is ill-defined. It is tan in color, it is quite fleshy, and it's quite variegated because we can see that there are pale areas and also dark areas. Moving on to uh, this particular spot, it's very clear. This pale area actually represents necrotic tumor tissue, this dark area, and these areas represent hemorrhage. Let's look at the next specimen. Here we see a coronal section of the brain. And there is a very obvious, discrete mass or space-occupying lesion in the right cerebral hemisphere. Looking at this actually looks quite different from the other mass, but we can also see that there are very extensive blackish or brownish blackish areas of hemorrhage and also some pale areas of necrosis. Over here, we can also recognize the mass itself and perhaps at the edges. So this may potentially be mistaken for an area of intracerebral hemorrhage because of the extensive hemorrhage into this tumour, and it may sometimes be difficult to differentiate between intracerebral hemorrhage and tumour on radiology, um, and a biopsy may be useful. The diagnosis here in these two cases is that of a primary brain tumour, and this is a malignant brain tumour. The clue is the presence of necrotic areas which indicates a rapid rate of growth, and the diagnosis here is glioblastoma. Glioblastomas are high-grade aggressive gliomas. So if you recall, gliomas are the biggest group of primary tumors in the brain, and they actually have three subtypes. They are astrocytic tumors, ependymal tumors, and oligodendrocytic tumors. So glioblastomas fall into the subset of astrocytic tumors, and by definition, they are high-grade tumors. Astrocytic tumors can range from grade 1 to grade 4 in the WHO classification system. Glioblastomas are at the highest end, and they are grade 4 tumors. They can be located uh, most frequently in the cerebral hemispheres, but they can also be found in other locations like the cerebellum, the brainstem, or even the spinal cord. And epidemiologically, there are two types. There are the primary glioblastomas, which form the vast majority of tumours. These usually occur in older adults. The onset is de novo, meaning that they do not arise on a background of another lower-grade tumour. And the very important characteristic is that the IGH gene is wild-typed. In other words, it is not mutated. So these are IDH wild-type tumours, and uh, these are of very poor prognosis. The secondary glioblastomas occur in slightly younger patients compared to the primary tumours. They are much less frequent. And in these tumours, the IDH gene is abnormal. It is mutated, so these are known as IDH mutant tumours. They often occur in the setting of a previous lower-grade uh, glial tumour, which progresses to a higher-grade tumour. So in terms of prognosis, the prognosis of primary glioblastomas is quite dismal. Um, it can range from a few months to usually less than two years. And in comparison, the prognosis for secondary glioblastomas is slightly better, but it's still quite poor. In terms of imaging, glioblastomas on CT scan show ring-like contrast enhancement. And this is really because they have abnormal leaky blood vessels and therefore this allows the contrast to penetrate the blood-brain barrier. Uh, clinically, they can present just like any space-occupying lesion in the brain with seizures, headache, or focal neurologic deficits. And the management is surgical excision, followed by radiotherapy as well as chemotherapy. But still, uh, the prognosis for these tumors is poor. Microscopically, they would show 
all uh, the features of high-grade tumors. So they will be hypercellular, there will be mitotic figures, the nuclei of the malignant astrocytes will be pleomorphic with variation in size and shape. These pictures are taken from uh, the PathLab online pathology resource. And there is also a very characteristic feature and this is known as pseudopalisading necrosis or palisading necrosis. What we see is the central area of necrosis which we can recognize because of the amorphous granular appearance and also with some of these pyknotic nuclei. And these areas are actually bordered by a kind of a palisading pattern of viable tumor cells. And often these areas of necrosis are elongated or sometimes even serpiginous uh, in shape and then they are bordered by these palisades of viable malignant cells. So this pseudopalisading necrosis is a feature of glioblastoma. And another feature is microvascular proliferation where in the small blood vessels there is proliferation and piling up of the endothelial cells so that these vessels appear thick walled and cellular. So in summary, we have here side by side two examples of a high-grade glial tumor, the glioblastoma, where we can see here on the left an ill-defined fleshy tan mass with areas of necrosis and hemorrhage, and on the right side a somewhat better defined extremely hemorrhagic mass with areas of necrosis. These tumors are rapidly growing and aggressive and have a poor prognosis. Thank you.